da da do da da da. Welcome to my channel Crafting Mat. Today I want to show you how I calibrated my FL Sun V400 3D printer after I updated it with original GitHub Clipper. If you want to know how this is done, I put a link to my video in the description below and at the end of this video. I updated to the original GitHub Clipper because I found some accuracy issues of the V400. Again, there is also a video if interested, check out the link in the description below or at the end of this video. Original GitHub Clipper has several advantages opposed to the FL Sun version of Clipper, especially when it comes to setup. Now this video will take you through the calibration steps required, starting with extruder calibration, setting the Z offset, end stop calibration, delta calibration, bad leveling, bad PID, hot end PID, and we will quickly check on the first layer. This video will not yet cover the input shaper optimization with ADXL345, otherwise this video would be too long. I will upload a separate video on that topic soon. An extruder is basically a simple device. In this model the yellow filament is moved by a gear which is in turn driven by a motor gear. When your printer is doing its job the gear is pushing the filament through the extruder towards the hot end where it is melted and squeezed through the nozzle. The extruder should do something very simple. When requested it shall push a certain amount of filament in the hot end and to calibrate it we need to make sure the proper amount is pushed. Usually the extruder is calibrated by commanding 100 mm of filament. If the measurement shows that only 80 mm have been moved or if 110 mm have been moved, it is time to set it accordingly. Here you can see how I do this. I am using my sliding caliper which I fixed at 110 mm. Then I mark the 110 mm of filament with a piece of adhesive tape. On my speeder pad I checked on the extruder tab and selected 25 mm distance. I am pushing at 2 mm per second and of course the extruder needs to be heated up. I am using PLA for this test so 210 degrees is fine. After 25 mm are done I need to add another 25 mm. And another 25 mm. And one last push will yield us 100 mm in total. At least it should yield us 100 mm in total. So when done I measure how much filament is left. And in this case it was about 9 mm. I repeated this test three times so I can calculate an average. In my case it's 9.04 mm which is a tiny bit of over extrusion. Not enough to write home about but still I try to improve it. Marlin and Clipper printers correlate the rotation of the driver motor with the extruded filament differently. Marlin printers count the number of steps of the driver motor per millimeter and Clipper printers determine the extruded length per full rotation of the driver motor. I checked the printer config file for the current setting and as you can see it is 4.5 mm. So how to compensate for Clipper? The original setting is 4.5 mm, but the test revealed 
that one rotation of the driver motor pushes out more filament. Instead of 100 mm, we ended up with 100.94 mm. So the rotation distance value has to be slightly raised as follows. And according to this little calculation, 4.523 mm is the proper setting to compensate for this tiny over extrusion. So we go back to the printer config file and we do this setting accordingly. Save and restart. And it's time to retest. This time I speed it up a little bit. The result is close to 10 mm, which is expected to be left over from the original 110 mm. Perfect. For setting the Z height, we need the leveling sensor first. Also, bed and nozzle should be heated, which I forgot when taking the video. So I repeated it later off cam. The Z offset calibration macro needs to be triggered. which will make the effector to move down and uh, do some probing. When done, it will lift off, allowing you to remove the leveling sensor again. The rest will be done manually. You need a piece of paper. I like to bow it a little bit, so I can see on cam when I get near to the bed. In my case, the printer is not next to the PC, therefore this comes in handy. And now we see that the that the bow is uh, reducing, so we are touching it. And maybe I was a little bit too careful here, but yeah, I checked for clearance. And of course it was perfectly clear at that point of time. So decreasing height again with decreased uh, steps and checking again for clearance, still clear. And decreasing step size again because yeah, we are getting close. checking it and at that point of time there was a little bit of friction so yeah I was testing and retesting again and again and of course uh, going really really careful And I think yeah, this was the point of time where I felt some friction, but not a lot. And this is how I want to set it usually. So for me, that was perfect. So the only thing left to do is to accept it and it will be stored automatically. No magic here, just execute the end stop calibration macro and let the printer do the rest automatically. 
When done, the only thing is to execute the save macro. The delta calibration needs the leveling sensor again. Same as the end stop calibration, also the delta calibration is no big deal, but it is important for the printer accuracy. The printer is calculating several important parameters with this macro. Same as before, when done, execute the save macro. The result of the bad leveling will be a mesh which is used to compensate irregularities of the bed and which should improve the first layer of your print. The first thing I did was changing the round probe count from 5 to 9 in the printer config file. More probing points are better, no question about that. You need to save and restart for sure. Next step, execute the bad leveling macro. You will need to install the leveling sensor first and it is a good idea to heat the bed, which I again forgot when taking the video and which caused me to repeat this step later on. Take note, when you print on the rough side, use the rough side for leveling. It does not make sense to switch for the even side because this means you will mirror your measurements, which will most likely make first layers worse than without mesh compensation. The bed leveling is a bit time consuming, therefore I speed it up a little bit. And when it's done, again you need to execute the save macro. And when you check the hate map on your main cell, you will see a result like this, showing high and low spots on your bed. Bad PID again is just the according macro to execute. Basically the routine will teach the controller when to switch off heating to avoid temperature overshoot. Therefore the bed will be heated to a certain temperature then cool it down to a lower temperature and heat it up again. This procedure will be repeated a few times. You can see this in the blue graph in main cell, which is temperature of the bed. It is really time consuming, about 11 minutes, and therefore I speeded it up again. This macro will automatically save, no need to execute the save macro at the end.
No big surprise, Hot End PID is very similar to Bad PID. Still, some footage here for you again, and the boring part, I speed it up. And now for the first layer. Unfortunately, I do not have good footage here. Also, I do not really want to explain this in depth. There are enough proper manuals around already. I recommend to do a first layer test, which I also did. In my case, obviously all was already tuned in quite well, so I did not change too much. I just changed Z height minus 0.03 mm and that was about it. Still, I have left some impressions for you here. And the overall result? My goal was to improve on the precision of my printer by installing original GitHub Clipper and doing a proper setup. Did this pay off? The answer is yes and no. I did test the snowflake, which I used as indication for precision in one of my other videos. And definitely, it is improved, but it is still not yet perfect. Still I can see the separated walls in the 120 degrees pattern, but the deviation of approximately 0.4 mm at maximum is now around 0.25 mm at maximum. As said, better, but not perfect. My next step is to have a video on the input shaper ADXL345. This will not improve on this kind of precision, but I hope it will have positive effect on the print overall. While creating that content for you, I had some interesting issues again, which I fixed. Be prepared for this one. I think it will be also quite interesting. So as always, maybe I see you in my next video. Bye bye!